So now we come to the focus of our journeys, and this is always the uh, focus on China-Philippine relations uh, and uh, policy matters that uh, affect this. And uh, we're privileged to have uh, Brigadier General Victor Corpus, former uh, ESAF chief, and um, advocate of the win-win uh, solution uh, to Philippine-China relations. And uh, he has a lengthy uh, uh, presentation on this concept of win-win, which he presented first, I think, at the uh, Diliman uh, Book Club, mm -hmm. and then uh, followed by recently uh, the show of Kit Tatad uh, and Ariel uh, Ayala. Uh, and he has improved upon the presentation to make it more condensed you know, uh, for this discussion of ours. So, General, take it away. How, where would you want to start? Um, I would like to start with the win-win uh, uh, solution for the RP-China dispute in the South China Sea. And you want to start the presentation, the Can uh, we? PowerPoint? Can you start it? And then let's just put the general in the uh, small frame. OK, we can begin. And uh, Jan, OK? Yeah, that's the title. The win-win solution to China-Philippine Sea dispute. OK. Next. Uh, next uh, slide. Next, next slide. Yeah, OK. Uh, let's focus on the general, not me, because I'm not the one uh, making the presentation. Oh, there's the general. Okay. Well, the, the first step is to resolve the uh, sovereignty issue. Mm -hmm. The Philippines uh, claims uh, sovereignty based on uh, legality, basically the PCA uh, ruling at The Hague, while China claims uh, sovereignty based on history, that uh, they discovered uh, those islands way back in 1287. They were the ones that named it. And based on international law, they are the owners of those islands. Or, uh, based on history. Based on history. So both have uh, their good points, but uh, never the twain shall meet. Yes, that's from a poetry. Line, poem, no? Lines no. a poem. No. Even for a hundred, nay, a thousand years. Yes. So even if we divide, debate a thousand years, we'll never. That's right. Uh, come to an agreement. So let, us, let agree. us agree with China based. So let us agree with China to set uh, aside the issue of sovereignty for the rest of the century. And maybe renewable every century. On condition that uh, no one surrenders uh, their respective claims, so no one loses face before their uh, constituencies. Once the issue of sovereignty is settled, the genuine win-win uh, talks can begin. A win for the Philippines. So what is a win for the Philippines? <coughs> the, I, I see uh, there are four uh, basic or core interests of the Philippines in the South China Sea. One to, th one to three involves uh, the traditional uh, fishery resources, oil and uh, gas, and uh, tourism. But uh, the fourth one is uh, something new, that uh, China make uh, Manila the easternmost uh, terminal hub of the maritime Silk Road of the 21st century. A road running from Manila to Madrid, then extend from Manila to Acapulco by re reviving the ancient Galleon route with assistance and financing from China. Yeah, this is the uh, classic map that we see uh, between uh, Asia going to Europe and back and Africa. to Asia, Africa, yeah. So the, uh, if you uh, look at the far end, the, yeah. the, uh, the, over there, yeah. Java. the eastern end of the uh, Silk, Silk Road, uh, yeah, we have the, Manila there. Yeah, there's uh, the Philippines on the very, very far right, no? 
-hmm. It's a bit cut in our screen. I don't know in wider screen if it. But, but be right now, because of our dispute with uh, China, we are cut off. We're cut off. Yeah. So, one of the uh, objectives of the uh, incoming talks should be that Manila should be officially uh, be included in the uh, Maritime Silk Road of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And that uh, Manila will be uh, will be uh, made into a uh, uh, terminal hub yeah. of the Silk Road. Okay, let's look at this uh, full frame. This uh, Manila Manila Acapulco Galleon Trail. Now, from Manila, the Silk Road can now extend by reviving the uh, Manila Acapulco uh, Galleon Trade Route. Mm. The uh, Silk Road, if it if it is uh, joined or linked with the uh, Manila Acapulco Galleon route, can extend the uh, Silk Road to Oceania, North and South America, the Caribbean, and on to Seville of Spain, mm -hmm. thereby uh, uh, making the entire Silk Road circumnavigate uh, the, the entire world, the, the entire the globe. Entire huh? world. Yeah. Now, so, if we look at and the... And we will be the, hu the hub. important hub. Anong hub that, in uh, Filipino? Centro. Pinaka-centro. So, Pinaka-centro. Centro, sir. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the uh, traditional or the uh, standard, standard obor, one belt, one road, it's only, it only traverses the Indian Ocean and the... It doesn't even traverse the Atlantic Ocean, eh? No. It does not. It's only the Indian Ocean. The Indian way, Ocean. Uh, and uh, then back to, to the, the China Medita Sea. Mediterranean. Mediterranean, yeah. Uh, uh, Pacific is not included. Pacific Ocean. It, it goes to the Atlantic because it will go to Duisburg. Okay. So Atlantic, uh, but not Pacific. There is no connection sa Pacific. No, Pacific. kasama yung uh, Pacific. Uh, no, no. Right yeah, now, right. it's not. Yeah. With your concept, yeah. the Pacific uh, side will also be covered by the One Belt, One Road. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It will circumnavigate. Yeah, yeah. Please, please. What's your reaction? <laughs> no, this is good, sir, because, um, you know, when we raise uh, interdependence, actually, I call this, sir, um, a, a, a regional or a multilateral system of mm -hmm. interconnectivity. Mm -hmm. So this is good, sir, because we are raising the cost for uh, conflict. Yeah. Yeah. And the, we are becoming more interdependent. We are erasing, you mean? Erasing. I mean, raising the cost. Raising. The cost for conflict. Cost, cost. Yeah. Any cause. Hindi cost. Cost. <laughs> cost. <laughs> Mapapataas ang uh, uh, penalty for yes, raising sir. conflict. Yes, sir. Presyo, you know, cost. No? And so, in effect, sir, we, we, uh, we increase yung interdependence with one another. Yeah. Well, it is also very interesting, this concept of the general, uh, now uh, brings up the potential of cutting through. There is this old concept of, uh, from, from Manila, cutting through to Quezon and opening a port in Quezon that goes out to the Pacific side. But anyway, these are, these are exercises in vision and strategic thinking, yes. which we hope uh, we can infect the Filipino population with. Right? Mm. But mo, General. Can we go to the next slide, uh, Next slide, okay. Now, to make Manila a maritime hub of the uh, New Silk Road, there is a need to modernize uh, the port and airport facilities in uh, Manila, Batangas, and uh, Subic. Railway uh, network north to south of both Luzon and Mindanao to include uh, Panay and Cebu. Fiber optic networks and uh, the latest uh, generation of telecoms to improve our uh, telecommunication system. Alternative energy, like wind and solar, and techno parks and uh, manufacturing zones in uh, select cities along the rail network. So uh, that is uh, what we will negotiate. That China will help us to build Manila as the uh, hub of the uh, Silk Road. Okay, a win for China. So what will uh, China now, gain from this uh, plan of yours? What will uh, China win yes. on this, uh, in this arrangement? Uh, can we uh, look at the entire map, please? Yeah, okay, the entire map, okay. 
Okay. <coughs> this is the map of the uh, South China Sea or West Philippine Sea. And uh, uh, it, to know the uh, win for China, our negotiators should be aware of the core interest of China in the South China Sea. <clears throat> Why did uh, China build those artificial islands, three of them with the three kilometer airstrips? And why will uh, China risk war with the United States to uh, retain those uh, islands? Okay. Robert Kaplan, one of the uh, re uh, most renowned uh, geopolitical analysts in the United States today and uh, a renowned author, uh, in one of his books, The Asian Cauldron, uh, Kaplan uh, mentioned that uh, or compared the South China Sea to the situation in uh, Central Europe during World War I, where in Central Europe, which is a land uh, climate, he said, is different from uh, the South China Sea, which is a uh, maritime climate. Because in uh, Central Europe, the, there was a, the area was densely populated that when two uh, big armies collided, it resulted in 17 uh, million uh, soldiers killed. 17 million soldiers and civilians mm -hmm. that were killed or casualties. While uh, here in the uh, South China Sea, uh, it, it consists of uh, mere uh, barren rocks with very few population and uh, of not so significant uh, geostrategic value. But to China, it is the exact opposite of Kapslan view. Because uh, can we look at the... Uh, Next slide? No, no, no. No, no. Can we look at the... Uh, the whole map. The whole map again, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Notice that uh, east on on the western portion of uh, the Philippines, that is where uh, the uh, Manila Trench, the deepest. Uh, so we can show the Manila Trench now. You okay. have an uh, uh, image there. Look at the, uh, this image. Uh, the Manila Trench uh, goes up to uh, the n north of uh, the Philippines. Uh, Tingnan natin yeah. Beyond uh, the next slide, th that is very or already very near uh, yeah, the that's Chinese the coast. That's Luzon. This one. Yeah. Okay. The red line is the. Uh, the red Manila line is trench. the Manila Trench. That's around 5,000 uh, meters deep. And it goes uh, north, going to Taiwan. Mm. And uh, that area north of uh, the Philippines is also very near, already within striking distance of submarines. Mm to the eastern coast of China. Balik tayo dun sa mapa. The whole map, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, in that area, it's already about uh, 300, 200 to 300 kilometers uh, to the Chinese uh, east coast. Yes. Where uh, uh, most of uh, the uh, industrial base of China and most of the 1, uh, 1 1.3 or more population are concentrated. Mm -hmm. So if the uh, submarines of uh, uh, the United States, like the Ohio class, can we go to that uh, Next slide? One. This one uh, or move on forward? Move on forward. That's the one, OK. Now, these submarines can use that avenue of approach, the deepest portion of the South China Sea, <coughs> and approach the uh, eastern coast of China. One Ohio class submarine, submarine uh, can, carry can carry 164 uh, Tomahawk uh, submarine launch uh, land attack cruise missiles. Mm -hmm. It's armed with a warhead, nuclear warhead, several several times uh, more powerful than Hiroshima, the one dropped in Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. So 
if there are, uh, say, uh, four or five uh, of such submarines using that uh, Manila trench to approach uh, China for a surprise uh, nuclear attack, within minutes, the whole uh, Chinese nation and civilization can be driven to extinction. Mm. Within minutes from a surprise attack in uh, that area. That is the reason why, can we go to the next slide, please? Next, next slide. One. Okay. This is the main reason why China set up those artificial islands cum bases to monitor and uh, prevent a surprise attack by U.S. submarines coming stealthily from the deeps of the Manila Trends in the South China Sea or West Philippine Sea. Next slide, please. So, China built those uh, islands. Okay, here it shows a civilian uh, plane. But, next slide. Uh, okay, full, full, uh, no. full. full frame. Uh, but the, the real reason there is for this uh, anti-submarine uh, aircraft. Uh, notice the tail of the plane. That is magnetic ma magnets, mm -hmm. strong magnets that can, that can uh, monitor if there are uh, submarines uh, below the surface of the water. Mm -hmm. So that these uh, planes can <coughs> land or use those. And operate uh, in the area. And operate in the area. OK, next please. Okay, um, the uh, islands also prevent uh, a possible blockade from coming from uh, the, for instance, the Seventh Fleet, uh, blockading the uh, Strait of Malacca. Coming from the Indian Ocean. No? Coming from the Indian Ocean, where the trade of China to the Middle East, to Europe, and Africa passes through. Mm -hmm. So. All the oil from the Middle East passes through the Strait of Malacca. Or the other streets there, the, uh, the Sunda Strait, the Lombok Strait. Yeah, and down the below in the, the Indonesian archipelago. Yeah. If those straits are blocked, it will, uh, it will uh, paralyze or, Strangle, or uh, think, force uh, mm. the entire uh, Chinese economy to grind to a halt. Mm. So China cannot afford that. Mm -hmm. And China will fight because those bases will prevent a possible blockade of the China's trade mm -hmm. in those areas. And if those, uh, if, uh, uh, those islands that are now held by China to prevent that uh, thing from happening are forcibly taken away from them, it will mean war. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that's very clear that the American view of Cape Plan simply does not understand uh, the perspective so, of China. So our neg negotiators should understand this because uh, uh, there's such thing in negotiation as BATNA, what better does that mean? Ah. better agreement, a better alternative to a to a, to a negotiated agreement. Okay, your, your bottom line. Okay. If you step on the bottom line, or if you, I think the red line yes, yes. of China, then it will mean war. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have our five minutes uh, to make sure that uh, you have uh, presented everything. Uh, okay. What so else? Maybe go can, ahead. Can we go to the next, next slide, please? Next slide. So, a win for China is for the Philippines to agree on the current status quo, <laughs> that both China and the Philippines continue occupying and developing the islands each country is occupying at the moment. Next slide, please. Next slide. Another win for China is Manila as maritime hub can revive the Manila-Acapulco galleon route that will expand the Obor to cover not only Asia, Europe, and Africa, but extend all the way to Oceania, including Australia, North America, the Caribbean, and South America. Next, please. Uh, so, the one uh, belt, one road. Uh, the 
the One Belt, One Road uh, initiative, initiative. Uh, or now the Silk Road, extended to a revived Manila Acapulco Galleon trade route, can be the largest economic development ever seen that mm -hmm. literally circles, circles the globe. The globe. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, let me remind historically uh, that the Galleon trade consisted 90% of tea, silk, and porcelain mm -hmm. that uh, the, Philippine, uh, the Philippines brought to Acapulco and then brought back Mexican silver in payment. So it uh, enriched both mm -hmm. the Philippines and China. But of course, it, not necessarily the Filipinos earned from that, but the Spanish uh, uh, rulers at that time. But it was still lucrative for the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. Can we go to the last slides? Okay. Ah, no. Second to the last. So, a win for China is the revival of uh, the Manila trade. Balik tayo doon. Balik, revival balik. of the Galleon trade. Balik tayo doon sa... Yeah. Is that the one? No. The second to the last? No, yung susunod doon. Revival of so, the Manila. Yeah. Kapulko. Okay. A revival... Wait, wait. Revival of the Manila Acapulco Galleon trade route through the Manila Maritime Hub connected to the Maritime Silk Road can make the One Belt, One Road initiative a truly planetary scale economic development circling the globe. Next. Next to that. Final. No? Final slide. Second, I think the second to the final. Rival import of Guadalport. Rival import of Guadalport. So this can rival the Guadalport that was uh, developed by China in With Pakistan, Pakistan yeah. that, uh, that China financed to the amount of $46 billion. Next. Hence, the Manila Maritime Hub can rival the Guadar port in ge geostrategic importance. It will touch a chord among China's uh, leadership that will increase the chances of success of a win-win resolution of the conflict. Now, the last, the last slide. The Philippines can be a key, a key terminal hub in the One Belt, One Road initiative. That is, if it plays, it moves right. Because one, as the saying goes, one wrong move on the chessboard loses the whole game. Well, That okay. ends the presentation. Yes, and that almost ends our program, our discussion. And uh, thanks uh, for uh, General Big Corpus's presentation. I think uh, we as a nation... Uh, know what that uh, strategic move on the chessboard should be. That is to move towards the uh, uh, negotiations with China to make the Philippines the uh, critical hub of the global uh, One Belt, One Road or the New Silk Road. Uh, Jed, any additional comments? Sir, so just uh, to comment on what the General said. I think it's, it really is our time to shine on the backdrop of the Asian century. That's right. So we should cash in on this and um, make it happen, talk with the Chinese, sit down with the Chinese and has to how this could materialize. And second, sir, I think on the strategic uh, point, uh, what's happening is that, as, as I see it, is that states are competing for strategic advantage. That's right, yeah. Enhancing, th enhancing their deterrent capabilities, but in the process creates a negative downward spiral. So okay. it is important to sit down, negotiate and talk and build more mechanisms and uh, um, give mutual Concessions. Well, as uh, so we discussed earlier, I hope we can have a people-to-people -people, uh, contact uh, with uh, Vic uh, here and uh, counterparts in China so we can bring this to fruition. Mabuhay po, General and Jed. Salamat po, sir. Thank you very much and join us again next week uh, on our journey uh, through history. <laughs>